And this Sunday morning, it's time to go through my Saturday superlatives. And of course, looking back at even prior to Saturday, those other college games are played during the week. I'm starting with quarterbacks. And welcome back, uh, JT Daniels. Of course, he's been playing the last few weeks after having still recovering, you know, recovering from an ACL in his U- USC days. And of course, uh, he's doing well. USC is doing well, but he had a very good game. 16 of 27, three touchdowns, 299 yards. And the thing that helps him to stand out from the other quarterbacks they've had playing before he, he took over is recognition. He has great pre-stat recognition. He gets the ball out quickly. And that's made all the difference in the passing game at Georgia. And it's helped all their receivers, and it's made it so you can't just stack the box. Uh, tell him to shout out Grayson McCall. Uh, just a freshman, and of course, we all know about what happened previously with, you know, the mullets versus the Mormons. But he's a guy that runs that, uh, you know, spread option offense. He has to make a lot of decisions. Sometimes, you know, decisions before, as soon as the ball's in his hands, he's deciding, you know, what he's going to do next. And then a lot of run pass option. And then once he decides where to pass it, there's a lot of times a lot of options where to go with the ball. He makes quick, smart correct decisions and he's so young 24 of 29 that means only five balls hit the ground in fact four because one was intercepted uh, obviously that's not ideal but he played very well 338 yards on 24 of 29 four touchdowns one interception and he also had a rushing td because he moves very well and another feel old moment for me uh brad johnson's son max johnson and maybe they found something in max johnson at lsu tough gritty game, very much like his father in terms of the grit, but I think he may have a better arm and he might be a little more mobile. But he went 24, 26, 239 yards, three TDs, and most importantly, no interceptions. If he turns the ball over, they probably lose. Now, someone who did turn the ball over, and one of them in spectacular fashion, uh, LSU's secondary, which of course we all knew was supposed to be good, uh, finally showed up and gave some trouble to Kyle Trask, who still had a good day, but not the day he could have had. 29 of 47, 474 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions, though. Also had seven carries for minus 28 yards because of sack yardage, but also had a rushing TD. Um, I really do see, like, a more mobile, sort of tougher version of Matt Schaub. He's a guy that's not going to blow away a pro day or a combine, but he's going to find a way to make it. He's already beaten the odds just by starting as quarterback at Florida. Uh, Keaton Slovis, once again, uh, he, he makes it exciting, as USC does, but if he cleans up a few little things, and he occasionally, once again, tries to get balls into places he probably shouldn't try to, and, you know, he, he, he can be fooled occasionally by disguised coverage, but most of the time he, he gets a good, clean pre-snap, and if it doesn't change, you know, he's really good at executing. But he was 30 of 49, four, 344 yards, uh, five touchdowns, a couple of interceptions, and, you know, one of them was just a sort of fluke the other one not a great decision um and then on the opposite side of that ucla usc game is dorian thompson robinson and i really like him at times but there's he once again he's another guy struggles with decision making and he's developed some habits now their offensive line has improved but it's sort of like you start to flinch a little bit at times because or you start to see things that aren't there because you've been hit so much but he's a tough guy and he's going to bounce back. And if their offensive line continues to improve, he'll work through those bad habits. But he was 30 of 36 for 364 yards, four touchdowns and an interception. And the arrow is pointing very much up on Dorian thompson Robinson. There was a point where a couple of seasons ago, people were wondering if he's ever going to become anything. He's going to become something. Here's a guy I really like. I've seen him twice, and I, I, I've liked him more each time I've seen him. And unfortunately, he got knocked around pretty good. Uh... Rocky Long gave their offensive line and their blocking protections fits. So Jake Hayner of Fresno State, who was a really good player, but he just got beat up really, really badly. But still, 26 of 43, 350 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. And like I said, just tough as nails. And if that team continues to improve, he's going to have a big year next year. Uh, Zach Wilson, obviously a lot of people are super high on him. And I see the things they see. I think... I'm seeing a guy who's very much like Jay Cutler, but with better decision-making. Uh, 26 of 35, threw in three yards, three touchdowns, and all the things that gave him trouble last week were not giving him trouble this week. See, he's still a guy that 
like I said, pressure definitely rattles him, and you can definitely get him to make some mistakes or hold the ball by changing the picture once again, as they say, uh, post-snap. But there's, you know, a lot to work with. Here's a guy, speaking of sort of guys back, we talked about JT Daniels. Here's a guy back, uh, Nick Starkle, who started his career back in the, in the Big 12, is now getting it done out west at San Jose State. Hey, you may not have heard this, but they're undefeated. Uh, if they win their next game, I mean, I, I know no one pays attention. Uh, and obviously, they've got a tough assignment in the uh, championship game of the Mountain West. But if they win, hopefully San Jose State will get some love. They have a great wide receiver in Trey Walker. And the guy getting him the ball is Nick Starkle, who went 20 of 30, uh, 306 yards, two touchdowns, an interception. And I don't think he's ever been an NFL starter, but could he be an NFL backup? Possibly. And here's a guy who didn't play very much, uh, but when he was in there, he lit it up. I, I, I fought back and forth between going with him or Mac Jones, but I finally decided to go with this kid just because uh, he doesn't have quite as much help as Mac Jones has around him. But Jaden Daniels went 9 of 11, so that means only two balls hit the ground, 203 yards, two touchdowns passing, and a touchdown running on four carries and 23 yards gained. And he's still thin. And, you know, my sort of cheap, easy comparison is sort of young Randall Cunningham. But, you know, he should put on another 17, 18 pounds. And he could improve in terms of ball placement. He could improve, once again, in terms of reading defenses. But he's got components, right? I'm excited about his future. Arizona State's a program headed very much in the right direction. And those are my quarterback superlatives for the Saturday and, of course, the days prior of the past week.